Hi, I'm Robert Alexander from iChem Labs, and this is the ChemDoodle Web Sketcher Advanced Functions tutorial for ChemDoodle Web Sketcher version 5. For this tutorial, I'm going to work with a molecule I created in ChemDoodle. So with ChemDoodle open, I select the molecule I previously created. I then go up to Edit and Copy As, and I can select ChemDoodle JSON or MDL MOL file. Either of these two options copy compatible data to my clipboard for use in ChemDoodle Web Sketcher. So, heading into Sketcher, I choose Open and use Command V or Control V for Windows to paste the data into the text area. When the data is pasted, I click the Load button and I'll have my molecule in place ready to work with. Before drawing anything, I can reposition the drawing area if I want to include more data. Normally, on tablets and smartphones, tapping and dragging on the screen allows you to move around the screen. However, if you do this over the drawing area, it will reposition the drawing area, but not the rest of the browser. With this new space I've created, I'm going to draw a few things. When I'm drawing any bonds or rings, I can use the Shift modifier key to adjust the size of the thing I'm placing. I can also use Alt to position it at any angle not just increments of 30 degrees. These two keys can be used in combination for fine-tuned placement of bonds or rings. I've shown a couple of the rings, but now I'm going to remove them and add more using the group button attached to rings. I can place a cycloheptane ring and then attach a cyclopropane ring. I'm going to place a variety of different bonds attached around this hypothetical structure. Again, after placing a couple of sample versions, I can go to the Group button and open more bond options, such as a half bond or an ambiguous double bond. The Group button here gives access to a variety of buttons which can modify an atom, as well as adding or removing the charge on an atom. I can add or remove lone pairs and radicals. In addition, I can use the Any Element button on an atom. This is used to denote an atom is any element, meaning the atom will not have a label such as carbon or oxygen. To remove this attribute, click the atom again with the Any Element button already selected. If you need to add an R group to a molecule, you can do so simply by applying the R group button to an atom, then entering the R group number into the text box that appears you may only enter positive integers. If you want to remove the designation with the button selected, click the atom and enter a value of minus one. I can use the lasso tool for accurate selection. Alternatively, I can use the lasso shapes only mode, which will select only the shapes within the lassoed area. So I can just select the arrow here, for instance. If I want a more basic selection method, I can use the rectangular marquee mode. In this mode, I drag out a rectangle and anything inside of that rectangle will be selected. With the caffeine molecule selected, I'm going to drag within the blue area, which rotates the molecule around. After this, I can use the clean tool to tidy up the appearance of the molecule in its new position. Next, I can look at fine detailed information regarding a selected structure by clicking on the calculator button. Now I just have one more thing to add here. I want to include the molecular structure for penicillin in the drawing area, but since drawing it would take a while and it has a recognized chemical formula, I can use the mole grabber button. I can choose from three chemical databases, then type penicillin and hit enter. Once the structure is loaded, I just click the load button to place the structure. Then I can reposition it by clicking and dragging inside the blue box and putting it into place.